I suppose for many people that uh, experience you had of getting the diagnosis of uh, serious cancer from the doctor is what they fear most. And that happened for you. You, you, you uh, were told that you had fourth stage cancer. What was your initial reaction emotionally? What did you feel when, when the doctor told you that? Uh, panic. Panic, yeah. I just don't know what to do next, you know, like, uh, I don't have much time left. What do I do first, you know? Um, Did you believe it? Did it seem uh, real? Yeah, I was hoping that they made a mistake, you know, that it's, it's, it's cancer, but it's not so bad, you know? But uh, the way the doctor looked, I, I realised that he was, he was serious, you know, and he, 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 he had his diagnosis correct. So... And with this panic came fear, um, helplessness, and um, yeah, you just you you're just like frozen. You don't know what to do. Yeah, that, those mm. are the initial reactions. And loss of control. You're not in control. That's right. Basic yes, things anymore. Yes, 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 yes. Everything is like uh, comes to a standstill. You know, and uh, and you don't really know whether you're going to go in two months or even less. You know, and uh, just this thought of, I've got to get a lot of things done, you know. What did you want to get done? What was your first priorities? I mean, it, wasn't, it wasn't to, I don't know, repaint the house or... <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the first um, feeling is to, to tell my loved ones that I love them. To, to, I mean, they, they already know, but just to, to be able to express it to them each personally. And of course, I have my youngest daughter, Georgina, who at that time was only 13. And I, I felt I have things to tell her that if I don't have, I'm not around, you know, as she grows up, as she matures, that I can um, tell her first. Although I don't know what to tell her. I mean, you, you, you know, I mean, life goes on. But uh, when you know that you're not going to be there, you, you just... You won't be the person to, yeah, to, to walk through that's those right. turning points in her yes, life. Yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah, and, and, and saying goodbye to all my good friends because I don't want them to be shocked that I, I'm gone before they, you know, they have time to know that I'm ill. Uh, I think those were the main things. Nothing much else to settle, you know. And fear, you know, you said that the feeling of letting go, or, or not letting go, but the feeling of having control and predictability suddenly taken out of your life and I think that's what it may be what we mean by fear but also we fear something you know maybe you fear mm. what 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 did you actually fear if you if you I mean, your feelings were obviously overwhelming mm. you but maybe as they settled could you could you identify particular things that you feared like mm. pain no, I think my first fear was fear of death. I mean, I have always been afraid of dying. I mean, I know we all have to go someday, you know, you can't live forever. But, you know, you always hope that it will be a long time from now, you know, and probably I'll be like uh, so old and dementia and everything that I, I won't be fully aware that I'm dying, you know, I'll be like fading off in a dream. But now I'm, I'm, I'm still, you know, a well and vital and everything. And, and just the thought of going now is, 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 is very scary, you know. The fear of the unknown, uh, what's going to happen over the other side, whether I'll go to hell because I'm not all that holy. <laughs> I haven't really prepared for this yet, you know, I, I was expecting more years of preparation. Because your faith, your faith is, your Christian faith is very strong and deep. Yes. And now over the last 18 years uh, as a meditator, yes. it, the whole contemplative depth of your faith has opened up. But I think you told me once that when you were first, uh, you know, as a, as a young girl, you took on a lot of fear in your religion to the fear of an angry God, that God was going to punish you. Yes. Did that, did some of that uh, feeling of f fear of hell, the fear of eternal damnation, did right. that come up, do you think? I think that partly is the main cause of my fear of death because it's like I have to face judgment and I'm not ready, you know, and uh, um, 
just not knowing what's going to happen on the other side. You know, I'd rather stay <laughs> in the place that I'm comfortable with. You know, and the other thing, of course, is the uh, sadness of leaving my loved ones. You know, I would like to be with them as long as possible, and and uh, just the thought that uh, the time with them is short is is it frightens me also. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and fear of, of pain, of course, because of the nature of my sickness. I don't really know how is it going to move, and and I, I wouldn't like pain to to. to I, I wouldn't like the pain to come to a stage where it is unbearable, you know, and uh, and I'm scared of surgeries and all those things that that's associated with hospital. What 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 enabled you? What were the elements in your life and in your relationships that helped you deal with that overwhelming experience of fear and panic at the beginning? Mm. Well, I, well, I suppose I immediately felt the support of my friends and the uh, meditate, the world meditation community that I'm part of. Uh, you know, with email, they were all sending me such encouraging uh, messages of hope and that they're praying for me. And, uh, and my friends at home came and really outpouring of love for me. I think all that positive thing made me feel that I think I can do it, you know, whatever I have to go through, I can do it. And I had this great peace that came over me after like, a week of panic, and and I think that's that's due to the prayer life and the spiritual life that I have been nurturing all these years. That which I think, which I at until that point I didn't know that I was growing. You know, mm. I mean, I just feel the same sinful self, you know, weak self. So I I can't imagine where that strength is coming from. So it must have just mm. I don't know just. Came, came at the right time, you know, when you tap into it. Did you, um, well, you've seen your feelings change. I mean, you don't, uh, you, do you experience the se that, you don't experience that same panic now. It doesn't look as if you do. And the fear is, you don't, you don't come over as somebody who is absorbed in fear at the moment. So we're, uh, I mean, obviously it must come back at from, t from time to time. When you remember that you know you, All the time. You, you do have the cancer and that time is short. Right. What? what um, but what? What? How, how? How have those feelings changed over, over the last uh, year? And and what do you feel mm -hmm. now? Say you felt this panic and fear uh, at the beginning. What would be the dominant feeling that you have now in yourself? Uh, now I would say it is surrender to God and complete trust in His love and his goodness and his plans for me you know so so i don't worry anymore because worry is a very uh, stressful and unnecessary waste of energy uh, so i focus now on living life fully just appreciating the gift of life uh, taking each day as it comes just happy that I'm alive this morning, you know, and let's see how we do today. Um, if there's going to be some pain, God help me. Uh, if not, thank you, thank you a lot, you know, that I can taste my meals. Because with chemotherapy, sometimes, you know, you just don't have the appetite. But if I can taste my meals, oh, thank you a lot, you in know. S in Singapore, it's very important to really taste your meals. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, and to see my loved ones, you know, like uh, spend time with my husband, uh, we go on the beach together, you know, have our walks, which wouldn't have happened if I wasn't ill because he would have kept that for our retirement years. So we have brought everything forward, you know, everything is brought forward. And uh, I'm so joyful for that, that, you know, I'm, I'm able to enjoy life now. And uh, just leave everything to God. Don't worry. Um, I can't stop it if I have to go anyway, right? It, it, that's the way things go. But I'm not going to worry about it. When it comes, I know that God will lead me over to the other side in a, in a 
atmosphere of love, so I'm not going to worry. And I just uh, enjoy my life each day as it happens, as it unfolds. And maybe for all you know, it will go on and on until 20 years. Who knows? Who knows? I think that, um, the, the transformation that, that I observe as a, as a caregiver, uh, this, this movement from uh, utter fear to, uh, to peace, you might say, I think um, it, it sort of evolved when, during the last uh, year, um, <clears throat> she has come to, to experience uh, and know the love of God in a very, um, very intense way. I remembered um, when, when, when I was talking to her at the very beginning, and she was seized with this fear and panic. And she says, "If I know that that I'm loved by God, that if God loves me, then I will have less fear or even no fear." And um, I think to to a great extent. Um, this experience of the love of God in prayer, in meditation, and the love of God that, that is uh, coming to, to, to her and to me, uh, to friends, uh, to even strangers who, who come up to us and, uh, and, uh, and tell us about their concern, that they are praying for us, uh, and from, from the children, from our children and, and, and our relatives. I think that has been probably the most significant uh, development in helping, helping her to, uh, to transcend perhaps the, the fear of death. And also I think what made so much difference, uh, even in the initial weeks, um, was uh, you know, two weeks after her diagnosis, that you came over to spend a week with us. Uh, you, you came over to, to Singapore straight away. and. Um, you come in the morning to our house to, uh, to meditate with us, to read the scriptures for us. And in the evening, you would celebrate the Eucharist and, uh, and, and have meditation for us. I mean, th that was so, uh, such an important uh, um, experience for us because immediately you brought um, meditation and, and the experience of God and, and the faith uh, in the gospel into the situation and because you have been our teacher of meditation I think that was that was very special to us and I think it, it really helped us to cope uh, you know with uh, with the trauma of the disease well, it seems to me a, a lot of people need and, and, and benefit greatly from different kinds of therapy uh, when they when they're dealing with uh, that those feelings of fear and panic and you know, your foundations of your life are shaken. In a way, you found that you, you didn't have any external therapy, did you? I mean, you found your therapy within, your, within the love of, uh, of Peter and the children and your family and the community and, and your faith community. Is, is that right? I mean, that yes. was really where you found your therapy, your yes. strength to, yes. to keep going. Yes. Right, yeah. I mean, when, when we first, um, when, when, when Patricia was diagnosed with the disease and, of course, immediately word spread to, to my colleagues in the office, to our friends, to our meditation community and to some of the meditators who you kept informed, I, I was inundated with, uh, with uh, requests to know what was happening. And so I, I thought I must, uh, you know, respond to this uh, uh, expressions of, of, of love and of concern from, from so many people. So we decided uh, then and then to say we're going to share our experience uh, with, with whoever was interested. And thankfully nowadays with, uh, with email I was able to compile uh, you know, mailing lists, various categories, uh, mm -hmm. uh, friends, office colleagues, uh, relatives, uh, Local meditators, uh, our worldwide community of meditators, and and so at first, every uh, significant moment, you might say, in the progression of the the disease and the treatment, I either Patricia would, I would encourage her to write a, a note, or I myself would have to do it if she was not able to, and we would send these messages out so that people felt that they were being kept informed, mm. uh, and they they could empathize with what we were going through. 
So I from panic, the, from from panic to yes. organization, and then with yeah. a more organized life, yeah. uh, the chance to, to be more peaceful because yes. you, yeah. you 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 yes. you uh, you radiate. Yes. And, and I think that the most the, the, the most imp uh, we have found that sometimes when of course when 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 we're in this situation that is a very private matter. And, and quite often you don't want to, 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 to share it or to talk about it openly. But in our case, I think we felt that uh, being able to share it uh, with our community of relatives, uh, friends and meditators made such a big difference mm. in, in helping us to cope.